All right, and this is a quick video to show how to use those charts I posted. Um, the real key in reading the diagrams is to know that that's connector C, this is connector A, and this is connector B. So they don't, it doesn't make any sense left or right. And the other thing to know is that, um, I don't know, one of them's upside down relative to the other one. This one, A, pin A is down in this corner and it goes one, two, sorry, pin one, pin one, two, three, four, five, six. And then on connector B, it's the opposite. It's one, two, three, four. So it starts in the middle and works out. One's upside down. They're out of order. <clears throat> Makes no sense. But that's how they're set up. And it shows it that way in the charts that I made too. This thing is just a convenient way to get power to test the motors and to test the heater motor as an example on the chart it shows to put power between A11 and A10. So that is, let's see if I can do this. That is this one. Got to get it in there. I tinned these so they're not all frayed wires. A11 and 10 and listen for the motor. Okay, so hearing nothing, that means the motor is all the way in that direction. So in that case, you reverse the wires, put positive up there, oops, put negative down here, hmm. positive up here, negative down here, and then listen for the motor. And you can actually see the flap on top there moving. Um, and then if you move it, reverse the wires, you can move the motor in the other direction. The uh, pins for the other motors are in the chart, so I won't do all of them. I'll just do that one. But the other thing when you're working on the motors is to make sure that the little position sensors are working. And so to do that, you check the resistance between A12 and A7. That's A12 and A7. Let's see if I can get that in there. And you've got about 70 ohms, which is, you know, that's fine for one way or the other. I guess that flap is fully closed, it looks like. And then if you wanted to check the other side of the potentiometer to make sure it's all working, it's, it's A12 to B6. And B6 is on the bottom row, and that's right here. And it shows 2159. I don't know if you can see that or not. Trust me, it says 2159, and that uh, that's about the range you'll see on all of them. And then if you flip the motor using the power, those values would change. So you'd have, when you check on the B6 one, it would be more like, you know, 75, and then more like 2150 in the other direction. So that's how you test the motors and the, uh, the position sensors. To test the temperature sensors, Believe me, I just lost our light. To test the position sensors, sorry, temperature sensors, we just look at the chart and we'll put the multimeter to ground and then the various pins. A1 tests the, uh, get in there. This is the resistance on the heater flap, meaning the heat that comes out of the vents. And that shows that it's relatively warm in here um, because there's two of us and lights and all that stuff. And then the inside temperature is a two, probably about the same, it is. And the outside temperature is a nine, which is down there. That's a warmer still because I ran the car earlier today. Then the last thing you can check under here is the solenoids for the heater and the recirculation solenoid, heater solenoid, the ones, the vacuum solenoids that operate the, the heater valve um, and recirculation. So that would be pin A3 to ground, which is down here. Try to pick it up like that. You see, you've got about 40, 45 which just tells you that the solenoid coil is not broken, not shorted, etc., etc. And then the same thing for the recirculation solenoid. About the same. Oops. Get that in there. Oops. Bear with me. About 
the same. 40. If I can get it in there better, it'll probably be about the same. 41, 42. That just shows you that the solenoid coils are you know, hooked up and functional. Doesn't mean that the solenoids necessarily work if something else is broken inside, but it's a quick test. So that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.